Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Hans Battle, and today I'd like to tell you about 9 must-have hobby tools and 3 to avoid at all cost. Here is all the tools that I use on a regular basis, like hobby knives, flush nippers, and a pin vise. I keep them in a tackle box for fishing, which makes them nice and portable. Everything in this box is pretty basic hobby supplies, but in this video I would like to show you some things that you might not know about. Number 1 There are a lot of hobby handles out there. The Games Workshop Hard Plastic one, the Tamiya one, some wine corks, or even this one. But they all have the same thing in common. They're not a small cube of wood. This is my preferred paint handle, nice and simple. If a model is based, I use some poster tack to stick it down, or if not, I just super glue the feet of the model to the wood. You can also drill a hole and insert a paper clip to attach something else like this backpack. You can also glue on parts for sub-assemblies. If I'm trying to get some wash to dry just how I would like it, I can move the cube around to make sure that it pulls in the direction I want it to. A lot of people don't even use paint handles, but if you do or want to try one, I'd recommend the little cube of wood. Number 2 I see a lot of people investing in steel files. I have a set myself, and they're great for working on things like metal or resin. But they scratch the surface of plastic so much that you need to sand them again before you paint. The best tool for the job? Nail files. These are great for sanding plastic kits. The rough side will blow through anything you want gone, and then the fine side will clean it up nicely. And the foam the nail file is made out of will help them contour around round shapes. I would also avoid sanding sticks or nail files that are targeted at hobbyists because they are the same thing but more expensive. Also, don't use steel files on plastic. Only pain lies that way. Number 3 It's hard to find drill bits in sizes smaller than 1 8 inch, and a lot of the offerings on Amazon leave a lot to be desired. Usually they come dull with poorly ground tips and you're lucky if they work at all. I'd like to introduce you to the PCB drill bits. These bits are super sharp and really hard. They will blast through plastic like nothing else and work perfectly in a pin vise. These work great for drilling out gun barrels too. Just know that although the bits are very hard, they are also very brittle, best used on plastic. Wood, resin, or metal will probably snap them. Number 4 Here's a quick one. Whether metal or plastic, they're perfect for mixing up small amounts of things. I'm talking about... Recycling caps for use as mixing containers. Want to soak a decal, mix some texture paste, or mix up a color for the airbrush? Nothing beats these little cups for mixing and painting. Number 5 Here's another quick one. You ever find you need some clean water in a hurry? A wash bottle might be for you. This is one convenient bottle full of distilled water right at your fingertips for quickly adding water to your airbrush, rehydrating your wet palette, or just cleaning some paint. I love mine and I use it constantly. It's great that it has no cap and I can use it one-handed and it won't spill either. Number 6 The best plastic glue I've ever used is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and Tamiya Extra Thick Cement. And if you're confused what I'm talking about, let me introduce you to putting plastic in your glue. Tamiya Extra Thick Plastic Glue is just the thin with sprue melted into it. These are the only plastic glues I use. The extra thin is perfect for nice bonds, it flows nicely into the gaps and welds the two halves together. But for imperfect plastic connections, like say a foot to a base, this Tamiya Extra Thick is the tool of choice. Number 7 Sometimes your paint needs a little extra help getting properly mixed and I think we all know what product I'm talking about. Rocks. Forget those stainless steel ball bearings that you could either buy expensive from Army Painter or take the risk of some Ally Express bearings that you test with magnets. Really, you don't have to do any of that. Just throw in a rock and give it a good shake. Any small, smooth rock will work. Just wash them first to make sure that nothing else gets into your paint. Number 8 If you've ever looked for a product to hold all your models, this is it. It's a 10 drawer paper organizer. This thing will hold your models, probably all of your models in fact. If you saw my video titled Every Model I Have Ever Painted, all those models fit into this sorter with room to spare. This can even work for taller models if you remove a drawer to give them a little bit more headroom. If you need your minis to take up a lot less room, this is the way to do it. Number 9 This is the product that gives me the strength to go on. Guys, I cannot recommend strongly enough to buy your super glue in tubes. It's so convenient and you get to start each project with fresh glue, and what is more important than a fresh tip? 
I have used a lot of different super glues that came in bottles. Super glue bottles with brush tips, super glue bottles with squeeze sides, super glue bottles with anti-claw caps, and it never helps. Maybe I'm just careless, but the caps would always get gummy, or I would forget to put the cap on, and sometimes the glue would dry out a little bit so that the cap wouldn't fit nicely back on, and it would prevent a seal, letting the rest of the glue start to dry out. And then when I would put it on my model, it would begin to frost because the glue has already started to cure, and it's awful and I hate it. These bottles just don't work. Don't buy them. But these single-use bottles are awesome. Start every project with a crisp new bottle. It'll flow nice, the cap will fit, and if you really need to get glue into the tight spot, well, the clean, never-used-before applicator tip is ready and waiting. Always know that you're using fresh glue. And it's not going to spill, and it can't be knocked over. Don't buy one. You've probably picked up on the first product that's gonna be in my do not buy list. Super glue in bottles. Seriously, I already said it, these are the absolute worst. They aren't even cheaper, they cost about the same, but you never manage to use up all the glue before it starts to go bad. I cannot recommend it enough to not buy super glue in bottles. It will ruin your life. Don't buy two. It's neat, it's cool, but it's very, very expensive. Mixing machines are great for scientific purposes, but they're not necessary for Warhammer. For $80, I could just keep the money and mix the paints myself. Now, as we finish off this video, I'm going to show you how to make a mixing machine. Step 1, open your paint pot. Next, add a rock. And step 3, shake well. These machines are very expensive because they really aren't meant for paint. Maybe if they become more mainstream and drop in price, but right now I cannot recommend them. Don't buy three. This one is probably gonna be a hot take. It's a big fad going around, but I'm here to help you save time and money. Don't move your Games Workshop paints into dropper bottles. You really don't need to move your Games Workshop paint into dropper bottles. There are only so many hobby hours in the week, why spend them not painting? It takes your time and money. I did a little research into this process and the cheapest bottles on Amazon were about $7 and are probably not as nice as the bottles used by companies like Vallejo. To get the paint from the Games Workshop pot into the new bottle, you need either a pipette or funnel. The cheapest pipettes for moving the paint over cost another $7. Throw in a roll of paper towel because it's going to get messy, and there's one more dollar. This whole process is going to cost you at least $15 and a lot of your time. That might not feel like a lot, but with that you could buy about 5 Vallejo paints and move your paint collection away from pots naturally. Or you could buy 20 of Games Workshop's lovely Necromunda 32mm bases. With that $15, you could have a feast from McDonald's. And if you need your money to be spent making you a better painter, you could buy this. The Age of Sigmar easy to build Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Look at these guys. For 15 bucks, you get four stunning models on lovely scenic bases. You buy these, you paint them up, and you will be a better painter. I have had many Games Workshop paints, some of them seven years old, and I've only had one go bad on me. And it was Ceramite White, which is garbage paint anyway. If you really hate paint pots, then don't use Games Workshop. Most paint companies are good now, except Army Painter, and most of the Games Workshop range is just fine. With some standouts like Corn Red and Lead Belcher, which are excellent. If we want Games Workshop to change their pots, vote with your wallet and don't waste your time. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope I've given you some cheap ideas to up your hobby game. Thanks for watching.